Hey guys, so a lot of people have been talking about the new In Flames single, saying it's a triumphant return to form. And after hearing it myself, I would have to agree 100%. I think that uh, it's at least as much of a return to form as every Sepultura record after or against has been. So I think we're all on the same page and saying that this is some truly inspired uh, death metal songwriting at its best. So what I wanted to do was look at it, look at the, the, the song in general, look at some of the riffs in the song, and find out why exactly it's head and shoulders above what they've been doing since the turn of the century. And instead of having us have to wait for In Flames to, to find their footing and, and make great music again, I wanted to teach you guys how to do it yourselves so that we're no longer in this 20 year rut when we can just make our own In Flames music and it'll be just as good as anything they've ever released. So if you stay tuned to this video, I'm gonna give you the keys to the Volvo. So the main reason that In Flames is so successful at everything they do is that they adhere to a very rigid template known as the Gothenburg sound. Now in order to approach this sound, you're gonna have to completely rethink the way that you approach your instrument. Now a lot of people are gonna reach for a guitar or whatever and think that this is a means to express yourself. And that is the worst mistake you could possibly make. If you're gonna to try to make the Gothenburg sound work for you, you're gonna to have to first think about what the audience wants to hear and give them exactly that. And remember, people are dumb as shit. So you're gonna to have to give them the dumbest fucking most chunder headed riffs you could think of. And then you'll really be on track to nailing that Gothenburg sound. So the first step forward is if you're gonna set the stage for your song, make sure you're doing a real basic open chug pattern to really get the pit moving. Just something simple like. So if you do anything like that, you know kids are gonna start moving around. And the best part about this approach is that you can do literally anything you want over the top of that if you have a second guitar and just have them play some, some shitty notes and people will say, oh, that sounds evil. But if you have them play some good notes, they'll think it sounds epic. So really anything goes. The important thing is to really set the stage and just get that really tribal pounding rhythm going so they can just slap them across the face with the next riff of the song, which is gonna be your good old fashioned twin guitar harmony. Now, a lot of you are probably asking, well, what's a twin guitar harmony? Well, that's the part of the song where a single guitar line plays a really catchy melody. And this new single from In Flames has that in spades. So I'm gonna play you the riff and explain to you exactly why it's so good. Shit, I, I fucked up the last repeat of that, but you get the idea. Now you might be wondering, how did In Flames come up with such an incendiary passage? And the reason is, instead of uh, thinking like most players do and looking at the melody as the single solitary voice of an artistic creator, they realize that what you want to do with melody is make it as simple and stupid as possible so that everyone can appreciate it and you can give them the mathematical formula of what sounds good so you have no risk at all. So what you want to do is look at melody, the, the strongest melodies you can imagine would be like what would kind of play from a, from a mobile over a, a baby's crib, that's what you want to give them. So. Uh, the, the, best, the best melodies you can think of are that simple and will really put you to sleep because, you know, if you really think about it in the history of metal, the best metal makes you really tired. So uh, I'm going to show you this melody without any of the open strings in it and, and you'll be able to hear just how simple it is and why it's so effective. <laughs> So super fucking catchy, right? But that's not all. The reason why this is, feels a little bare bones, right? Now, you kind of got to give it an additional coloring by using the oldest trick in the book, which is the 08 interval. When I say 08, you might be all really confused, but it's the, the best way to make your music sound emotional or developed or any of those buzzwords that don't really mean anything. So I'm just going to show you exactly what that means. So you're going to take that basic melody and you want to fill those gaps first with, with some open strings. Okay, but that's not all. Now, 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 now you're getting somewhere. It's sounding, sounding pretty good. But if you really want to make people feel that you're, you're 
a master manipulator of musical emotion and can just string together this really advanced tapestry of, of melodic lines here, you're gonna throw in that, that eighth fret to ground you, right there. That's the magic note, I'm telling you. So watch what happens now. Now you see, it's a completely different riff now. And if you think about what's going on with how they develop the melody, the first two notes are the same. And that's all the same too. So you really don't have to add many notes at all to your melody to make it really strong. You know, you, it pretty much writes itself. You follow the dots here and, and you'll kind of get somewhere, but we're gonna get to the dots in, in a little bit because that's where it gets a little confusing. Now, one of the most frustrating things about the Gothenburg sound is unfortunately, not all of the good notes are right where the, the fret markers are, you know? So you, you're gonna have to play out of your comfort zone. So the, that best note that you got in your arsenal, that, that eighth, there's no fret marker there. So you, you might be really confused. And, and right now, you're, you're taking the right approach by looking at this low string as having there, there be nothing in between you and that eight. That's all you got to worry about. Now, all the, all the other notes that are uh, in this riff, you know, uh, they, they're kind of scattered too. And you've got some that are like on the 10th fret. There's no marker there. So that's really frustrating. You know, how are you supposed to know where to go? So the best way to approach the Gothenburg sound would be to get a, get a guitar first with no fret markers, no inlays or anything. That way you can make your own and make sure you land at where the notes are good for the Gothenburg sound. So as you can see, I gave myself some custom inlays here so that I could really nail that Gothenburg sound. I've managed to cover all of the notes that you're gonna find that are gonna develop that melodic voice as well as possible. I have my, my eighth fret marker here, only on the low string, so I know that if I need to change the, the color of my melodic intervals, I, I can have that be my new, my new bass note, and it'll give you that real sappy tone that you need for your melodies. So. Uh, in order to prove to you that if you go outside of the notes that are marked here, that you're going to betray that Gothenburg sound, I'm going to play you a riff right now that has a couple of notes that are not labeled, and you'll be able to see it sounds nothing like Sweden. <laughs> as you can see sounds like absolute dog shit right like a totally undeveloped sense of melody and nothing like what you would hear from Gothenburg so now that you've mastered the secrets of Gothenburg melody you're probably gonna start thinking what do I want to do for my chorus now if you want to approach a chorus you're gonna want to start thinking what can I do to get the most fists banging in the crowd you know to get them to feel like they really belong to something and, and remember, you're writing for your audience here. This isn't for any kind of catharsis for you. So your goal is to deliver to them all of the basic talking points of this melodic formula here. And, and in order to do that for your chorus, you're gonna wanna stick to a very basic strumming pattern. If you get lost, just kind of follow the dots and you'll be okay. So I'll give you an example of a really basic chorus idea that'll be sure to get the crowd moving. That's all there is to it. Now, in order to fill that void you had from your, your melody being gone, you're gonna wanna make sure that the vocals over the top here are like way too loud for the mix and kind of blown out and really past their prime. And that way, you'll be sure to grab the audience by the balls and divert their attention from the fact that you have very little happening with your guitar there. So, you know, and you've got your whole arrangement now. Now, all you gotta do is kinda throw any of the shit that you came up with in whatever kind of bullshit order you want. And, you know, if you're feeling really adventurous, you can come up with a bridge. But I wouldn't recommend it because a lot of people, when they go into a bridge, they kind of use some of these notes that don't have inlays. And that's, you know, that's kind of a advanced territory there. So just stick to the formula, stick to what works. That's what we're trying to do right now. I mean, this is tribute music at this point. So just stick to what works. So 
That's about all there is for the Gothenburg sound. I hope that you're able to understand exactly why In Flames are the kings that they are and why this new song is as good as anything they've ever released. And here's to however many more fucking years they got left in the tank. <laughs>